what up guys bass drop keys your friendly neighborhood negro and a rookie mycologist now if you're watching this that means that you probably know me from being in the cannabis community but now what i want to do is i want to teach myself how to grow mushrooms in today's video we're going to be starting a product review for the north spore boomer bag monotub mushroom grow kit because of your support on the channel north spore is my first sponsor for this channel so if you're watching this video and you decide to get something from the website use the code base drop keys that will give you a 10 percent discount on any order at northspore.com now north spore has different monotub kits on their site you can see the boomer bag kit that's what we're going to use that's for any mushrooms that love manure you have the wood lovers kit obviously for mushrooms who love wood and you have the fruiting block kits which comes with a fruiting block that's already colonized and you can grow your mushrooms right inside the monotub as i said we're going to be using the boomer bag kit it's supposed to be a starter kit that comes with everything that you're going to need for your entire growth so let's check out everything that it comes with the first thing that it comes with is a monotub this monotub is from Max Yield Bins. Anybody that's in the mushroom community has probably heard about Max Yield Bins before. They are specifically designed to grow mushrooms. They have holes on the base and on the lid for air circulation. And they come with a custom light blocking base to prevent those side pins from forming. The next thing that comes with the kit are the boomer bags. The boomer bags are sterile manure based substrate that they have formulated to grow mushrooms. Each bag is five pounds and you get three of them for a total of 15 pounds of substrate. The next thing that you get with the kit is a sterilized grain bag. Now obviously whenever you're doing your mushrooms you need some kind of grain to colonize. No matter if you're using a multi-spore syringe or liquid culture you can use the boomer kit sterilized grain bag it does come with an injection port and the bag is three pounds the next thing that comes with the kit is a five pound bag of coco coir now you already have 15 pounds of substrate that they gave you so you don't need to use this cocoa for that although you can if you want to what most people do is use this cocoa as a casing layer on top of their substrate once they mix that and the grain together. The last two things that come with the kit goes along with the Max Yield Bin, the self-adhesive filters, and the black micropore tape. The self-adhesive filters are what you're gonna cover those big holes on the Max Yield Bin lid. You see those two inch holes? You're gonna put the filters over the holes and that's gonna help keep out foreign spores and other contaminants. Now, as far as the black micropore tape, you're gonna use that to cover the holes on the black base on your Max Shield bin. It is crucial to make sure you have proper air exchange with everything that we're doing while we're growing our mushrooms. At the same time, you also need to maintain proper humidity. And so what the filters and the black micropore tape do is just that. They help you with the airflow and air exchange while allowing for the proper humidity that the mushrooms need to really thrive. And you can see here that during colonization, they do recommend that you cover up those black holes in the base. It doesn't matter if you're gonna get the Boomer Bag or the Wood Lover Monotub Kit, it's gonna be $165 or $175 with taxes. Use my code BASEDROPKEYS to get 10% off. You can see that you'll get it for under 158 bucks. So we've gone through everything that you get with the Boomer Bag Monotub Mushroom Grow Kit from North Spore. All of that sounds good, but you guys know how I do. The real way to see if this kit is any good is by using it. So that's what we're gonna do. This is gonna be a grow series right here on the channel. This is the North Spore Grow Series. We're taking this kit and we're gonna grow some fantastic mushrooms. The first thing that I did is I took some liquid culture and I inoculated the grain bag that came with the Boomer Bag Kit. The footage that you're watching right now is me inoculating some grain bags. This is not the footage of me inoculating the North Spore grain bag. If you don't know how to inoculate a grain bag, I will put the video in the card in the top right corner. I also will put it in the description box. Now something that really is worth mentioning is, this is my first time using liquid culture. Everything that you've seen on the channel previously, I use multi-spore syringes. 
if you're using liquid culture, it's gonna colonize faster than if you're just using multi-sport syringes. The reason is, liquid culture contains mycelium that's already been germinated. Whereas when you use a multi-spore syringe, whenever you inoculate your grain, they have to come together and germinate, then they start forming the mycelium. Liquid cultures already contain mycelium. I inoculated the grain bag on November the 5th. This footage is from two weeks later, November the 19th. The North Spore bag is the bag right there on the right hand side. Here it is a week later on November the 26th. It's now November 30th, 25 days since we inoculated the grain and look how it looks now. Now I believe we have enough mycelium growth where we can do the break and shake. Once you do, you're gonna break up the mycelium that you have and you're gonna mix it thoroughly throughout your bag. By doing this, you create a lot more inoculation points and that's gonna help colonize the grain bag even faster. So you just saw what it looked like when it was 20 to 30% colonized. You can see right here that I'm actually breaking up another bag, but the bag that you see right there on the right hand side, that is the North Spore grain bag. This is how it looked after I got finished breaking up all the mycelium and mixing it all throughout the bag. Also what I did do to make sure I don't confuse anything, I wrote down the date that I did the shake on. So if you look at any of my bags, you'll always see the date that it got inoculated and then you'll see the date that I did the shake. It's now December 4th, and you can see that the grain has already started back colonizing. That brings us to today, December the 10th. You can see that majority of the grain is already colonized. I think we'll be fully colonized and ready to go to the next step in a couple days. And this is just a reminder that everything that we're gonna be using, you can find in the North Spore Boomer Bag Kit, except for two items. Right here you're looking at a Max Yield bin that comes with the kit. The thing that didn't come with the kit is the lid. This is a colonizer lid from Max Yield bin. The Max Yield bin that comes with the kit, it comes with the lid that we're going to use whenever we start fruiting. You can use the big lid that it comes with. You can use that to colonize as well. You just want to cover the holes with some tape and whenever you're ready to start fruiting, you're gonna cover the holes with the micro pore filters that they provide you with. Also, I'm gonna be using a liner. This liner does not come with the kit. I got this off of Max Yield Ben's website, just like the colonizer lid. So basically what I'm saying is, everything that you're gonna see in this video came with the kit, except for the flat colonizer lid from Max Yield Ben and the liner. Neither one of these items is necessary to do what we're doing, but I saw them on the Max Shield Bin website and decided to get them. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna break up our colonized grain so that way it'll be easier for us to pour it into the substrate whenever we're making our cake. The first thing that I always do before I start handling everything is I spray some 70% ISO alcohol on my hands. I spray it on a paper napkin wipe down everything, wipe down the bag, wipe down the scissors, wipe down everything. That's the first thing that I always do before I start handling anything. Once you do that, you're just gonna break up the colonized grain inside the bag, break it up as much as you can. We want it to break up into individual grains again if possible. It's not that hard to do. Once you get the edges kind of broke up, everything else seems to crumble after that. The next thing that we need to do is we need to set up our max yield bin. The first thing, and setting up your max shield bin is you're gonna take that black micro pore tape that they give you in the kit and you're gonna cover all the holes on the bottom part of the max shield bin. You'll notice that on every side there's some holes. Those are additional holes that you can use for gas exchange and fresh air intake. North Spore does recommend you to cover them up during the colonization process. I covered this in the first video in this series where we covered the Boomer Kit. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it in the description box. I also will put the card on top here. In that video, I go over everything that's in the Boomer Bag Kit. So if you wanna see that video, check it out. Now I have the holes covered up. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean the inside of my Max Shield bin with the 70% ISO alcohol. It's super easy. You're just gonna clean it like you clean everything else. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that liner that I showed you previously and I'm gonna put it inside of here. Once again, you can find the liner 
on the Max Yield Bin website. Once I have the lighter inside, I'm gonna clean it like I cleaned everything else. Remember guys, when we're doing our mushrooms, you cannot be too clean. If you're thinking you're doing too much cleaning and being too sterile, do even more. Once we have the liner clean, now we're gonna start making our cake. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of the bags of substrate that comes with the Boomer Bag Kit. Remember, the Boomer Bag Kit comes with three five pound bags of substrate. I'm gonna take one five pound bag and I'm gonna put it inside of the liner. Once I do that, I'm gonna take this scoop that I got from Amazon and I'm gonna break up the substrate. I'm basically just trying to break up all the big clumps and have it even throughout the liner. I got a scoop off of Amazon so that way I wouldn't have to get my hands dirty because you know your hands get dirty and you still got other things that you need to handle in order to make everything happen and it's just a mess. So with this scoop, I'll be able to scoop out my substrate. This is a 16 ounce scoop, but also I don't have to get my hands dirty doing this. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our colonized grain and I'm gonna pour it into the substrate. I'm just trying to make sure that I get everything out of the bags, that way nothing's wasted. Once you have that, you just wanna mix everything together. Mix it together well, as best as you can. Now, being that this is my first time ever doing this, I looked on YouTube to see if anybody else had already done this before and I can't find anything. So I really don't know how much substrate I should use to how much grain. So this is what I'm gonna do. Once I put the first bag in there with the grain and I mixed everything up, to me, it didn't look like it was a thick enough cake. We're using this big Max Shield bin and I don't wanna treat this like a shoe box or a six quart or 12 quart mono tub. So I decided to open up a second bag of substrate, pour in here with the rest of it and mix it all together. So just to recap, I use two five pound bags of substrate. It comes with the boomer bag kit and the grain bag is a three pound bag of grain. It's colonized. I put it all together, mix it together well and that's what you're looking at right now. Another reason that I did this as well is I'm looking at the liner and I figured the liner has to be that tall for a reason. It's gonna fit in the bottom of the Max Shield bin. And so that's why I added another bag as well. I'm like, they wouldn't have gave me all this space for no reason, you know what I mean? So I added another five pound bag. Okay, so now that I have that second bag of substrate mixed with the other one and the grain, what you see here is actually a burger press that I got from Amazon. And what I'm doing is I'm using this burger press in order to press and pack down the substrate and the colonized grain, just like we did in the Uncle Ben's Tech Spawn the Bulk video. With this burger press, I can do a lot more area at one time. Also, it's really easy to get the corners of the Max Shield bin with this press. And with the burger press, I'm just making the top as even as possible. Remember, you wanna make the top as even as possible so that way we'll have some uniform pins form and those pins are gonna turn into some fantastic mushrooms. Now that I have that done, I'm gonna add the casing layer or pseudo casing layer, depending on who you talk to. Some people don't feel this is a real casing and that's fine. But anyway, I'm gonna take the cocoa courier that comes with the kit and I'm gonna use that to make my casing layer. With the casing layer, you want it to be an eighth of an inch to a half inch thick. What I did is I basically just took up the rest of the liner space. That's how I determined how much casing to put on. As I said previously, this is my first time doing a big Max Shield bin or a big monitor tub for that matter. The only ones that I did before was the 12 quart ones that you've seen in another video, the Uncle Ben's video. This is my first time doing a big tub like this. So now that I have the casing layer on there and I use the burger press to make everything even, I'm gonna take this Flarisol bottle. This is a ultra fine mister. And what it does is it makes sure that we don't have any big water droplets on top of our casing layer. We don't want pools of water on top of the casing layer, but we do wanna make sure that there's moisture inside of here because we need that humidity. We want it to be humid inside of this container. So that way the mycelium can colonize this entire substrate. Also, I should mention that I'm not just spraying the casing layer 
I'm also spraying the underside of the lid as well. Put the lid on top of there and you're gonna leave it like this for seven to 14 days or 20 days, however long it takes for it to colonize. You're gonna leave it like this. And then once this is like 80% colonized, we're gonna put it in the fruiting conditions, which in this case just means that we're gonna take off the colonizer lid. We're gonna put the adhesive filters on top of the lid that comes with the kit, the big one, and we'll put that lid onto this. That's gonna allow FAE, fresh air exchange. And whenever we mist the tub again with the flaresol bottle, whenever it's pinned up, the evaporation of the water along with that fresh air exchange is gonna give us the perfect surface conditions and it's gonna make the mushroom start fruiting. After that, seven to 10 days later, we'll have some beautiful mushrooms to harvest. All right, so it's 11 days later, January the 1st, and this is how the tub is looking right now. You can see that we do have a good bit of colonization going on right now. And honestly, I probably should have put it in the fruiting conditions right here. As I look back on it now, I allowed way too much water to pile up on top of the substrate. I should have got some of this water up with paper towels or put it in the fruity conditions, which would allow more fresh air in, which would help a great deal because the water would start evaporating. Okay, so it's five days later, January the 6th, and I almost forgot to get footage of this before I threw it out. Check out how it looks now. Obviously, it's very contaminated, and like I said previously, I really think that I just allowed too much water to build up, and this right here is just contamination and wet rot and all kinds of stuff. The one thing that I regret is, this is all the liquid culture grain right here. What I should have did is, I should have saved some of that grain and put it in a smaller container, but I didn't do that. So this is all of the liquid culture grain right here, and obviously, I threw it out. Okay, so my first attempt was a fail, but as you guys know, failure is part of the process. You're not gonna learn how to do anything if you're scared to fail. That's why I have so much going on inside my incubation box. I know because I'm new at doing all this that I was gonna have some failures, but I don't care. I'm gonna keep doing it until I get it right. So what you're looking at right here is a fully colonized grain bag. This is a five pound grain bag that's fully colonized. So I'm not gonna talk through the entire process of how I spawn to bulk. The main thing that was different this time then the first time, this time I used one five pound bag of substrate and I used some of the cocoa core and mixed it together. If you remember the first time, I used two five pound bags of substrate and I used a cocoa coir as the casing layer. This time around, one five pound bag of substrate from North Spore. I mixed some of the cocoa core with the grain and the substrate and I used the cocoa as a casing layer this time around. Also, once I got everything inside my Max Shield bin, I barely sprayed it with any water. Remember the first time around, I said that it was way too much water that I let pile up inside of there. So to try to combat that, I barely sprayed it with my Flarisol bottle. I'm hoping that by keeping this drier, that I won't get any contamination and I'll be able to fulfill my dream of seeing this entire Max Shield bin full of mushrooms. Also this time around, I didn't put the entire five pound bag of colonized grain inside the Max Shield bin. I saved some of it and I used it for this 12 quart shoe box. You guys will find out more about this shoe box tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's four days later, January the 15th, and you can see that the substrate is starting to colonize. It's three days later, January the 18th, and you can see that there's more colonization that's going on. I should have just put it in the fruiting conditions right here. All right, so that brings us to today, January the 22nd, and this footage was taken at 1.28 p.m. And you can see that that extra water is actually dropping onto the substrate. The same thing that was happening before is happening now, so I knew that today was the day that I needed to put this Max Shield bin in the fruiting conditions. 
All right, so this is still footage from today. This is from 11.50 p.m. So what I'm doing is I'm preparing to put this Max Shield bin in the fruiting conditions. But when I open it up, I got a big surprise. Check it out. Well, would you look at this? As you can see, this is contaminated. So I'm gonna to have to throw this out. So for anybody that's keeping score, this is my second attempt. And this is also a failure. So for the one month update for the North Spore series, you can see that I struck out twice. Now, does that mean that I'm gonna give up? Come on now, you guys already know, absolutely not. I am failing, but I'm still learning a lot. All right, so here we go again. This time around, I'm gonna use one bag of grain spawn. This is colonized grain spawn right here. And I'm gonna use two five pound bags of North Spore substrate. I also wanna fix something that I said last video too. I said that the colonized grain bag was a five pound bag. That's actually a three pound bag of colonized grain right there, not five. But at any rate, you guys know I always start by spraying my hands and everything that I'm using, everything that I'm working with, I spray it down with 70% ISO alcohol and wipe everything down. You just saw me do that. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my colonized grain bag and I'm gonna break it up. You wanna try to break it back up into individual grains if you can. But at any rate, while I'm doing that, let's talk about what I got wrong. So as I just said previously, I had a conversation with Miss Jill from North Sports. Shout out to Miss Jill. So where I made my mistake at is I assumed that the cocoa was pasteurized and that was totally my fault. Just because the grain bag that they send is sterile, the substrate that they send is sterile, and so I just assumed that it was pasteurized, and that's totally my fault. After talking to Miss Jill, she let me know that it's not pasteurized. So once she told me that, everything made perfect sense. You guys know that I know that I need to pasteurize the cocoa because we did it right here on the channel. You guys saw me make my own bulk substrate where I pasteurized the cocoa, so you know that I know that that's supposed to happen. I just assumed that it was already done and that's my fault. So what we're gonna do this time for the spawn the bulk is we're gonna do things a little bit differently. The way that I've been spawning the bulk every time is I mix the substrate with the colonized grain and then I put a case and layer of cocoa on there right from the get go. We're not gonna do that this time. This time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one five pound bag of substrate inside of my liner then I'm gonna take the colonized grain bag and I'm gonna put most of the colonized grain on top of that. I'm gonna save a little bit in the bag so I can put it on the top. After that, I take my second five pound bag of substrate and I'm gonna cover up the grain, but I'm gonna save a little bit of the substrate just like I did with the grain bag. So you see in this time I'm doing the layer method after that, I'm just gonna take the rest of the grain that I saved and I'm gonna sprinkle it all over the top. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the substrate that I saved. I'm just gonna cover up the grain. Now that I have everything inside of here, I'm just gonna take my burger press and I'm gonna press it lightly down just to make it somewhat even across. And then the final step is I'm going to take my 70% ISO alcohol and I'm going to spray down the walls of my max shield bin at the bottom. I'm also going to spray the underside of the lid with the 70% ISO alcohol and then close it up. Once I close it up, I'm going to put it back in my incubation box, which you guys know is a tent for me. And this is where it's going to stay for the next two weeks. I'm going to let it fully colonize. Once it's fully colonized, then we'll put our casing layer of cocoa on there and flip it in the fruiting conditions. Okay, so it's 12 days later and I have not opened up the lid at all until right now. For the last 12 days, it's been inside the incubation box. I just been letting it sit in there and colonize. I didn't open it up at all. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got. Well, damn, I don't have to tell you what this is. This is clearly contaminated once again for the third time. So I was hoping that I would be able to add the casing layer and put it in the fruiting conditions, but obviously we can't do that with this contamination. So it's gonna go right into the trash can. At this point, I gotta say, I really don't know exactly what I'm doing wrong, but I do know that there's no way I'm giving up. I'm gonna keep doing it. 
I don't care how long it takes. I don't care how many times it takes. I'm going to keep doing it until I get it right. And then after that, I'm going to keep doing it. It's not in my nature to give up. When I want to do something, I make it happen and I do it. I also want to say here real quickly, guys, that I hope everybody is appreciating the transparency that I have on this channel. I know there's a lot of rookies like me that's just getting into growing mushrooms and I don't want you guys to have like some false premise of what's going on. I don't want you guys to watch my video and be like, his works every time. Why isn't mine working? I could very easily just not put my failures on the video. That's the thing about making content. I can make it say whatever I want it to say. I can make it look however I want it to look. But what I'm choosing to do is to tell you the 100% truth, give you full transparency on what's going on. So if it takes me 20 times to get it right, then that's just what it is. This is my third time getting it wrong. So you know what we gotta do? We have to spawn to bulk again. Okay, well here we go again. We're gonna spawn to bulk for the fourth time. Now, like I said, I don't know exactly what I'm doing wrong. I probably watched 50 spawn to bulk videos on YouTube trying to see exactly what I'm doing that's wrong. And watching all of those videos, I still don't have a clue what I'm doing wrong. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to control all the variables that I can. As you guys can see right now, we're inside of my steel air box. This is my steel air box, the knock box from North Spore. And so what I'm doing is I'm gonna spawn to bulk inside of my steel air box. With all the videos and the research I did in the spawn to bulk, I have not seen anybody do it inside of a steel air box, but here we are. I'm really hoping that this time everything will get colonized without any contamination. I have not made it to fruited conditions with any of the big max shield bins that I've done so far. The mushrooms that you've seen harvested here on the channel has been in the 12 quart shoe boxes. And then the other one was an all in one mushroom bag that I put inside a max shield bin, but the fruity conditions and everything was already done on that whenever I did that. So with using the max shield bins, I have not made it to fruity conditions one time with these big bins. Also, another variable that I'm controlling is the max shield bin that you see me using right now. This is brand new from the company. The last three times that we spawned the bulk in this series, that was the same max shield bin that I kept cleaning over and over again. And my thinking is maybe there was some contamination that I missed whenever I did the cleaning. So to make sure that that's not a concern in this, these are brand new max shield bins right here. Everything that I'm using is brand new. Oh yeah, and the other difference is I'm growing a new strain of mushrooms. The strain that I tried growing the last three times that it failed is a different strain that I'm attempting to grow right now. And for this spawn to bulk, I use one three pound bag of colonized grain and I use one five pound bag of substrate from North Spore. I didn't do any layering or anything fancy. I put the colonized grain in there, spread it out even, put the bag of substrate on top of it, spread it out even. I did not spray anything this time at all. If you guys recall the first two times I misted it with my Flarisol bottle, then closed it up, contamination. The third time you saw me spray the walls with the 70% ISO alcohol, contamination. This time I didn't spray anything. I put the grain in there, put the substrate on top of there and closed it up and that's it. Also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spawn the bulk again outside of the steel air box to see if there's a difference. As I told you previously, the bins that I'm using today are brand new. So what you didn't see me do inside the steel air box that I did do is I put the micropore tape on the holes at the bottom of the max shield bin. That is black micropore tape that I'm using to do that. I did the same thing to the bin you saw in the steel air box, I just didn't show it. But anyway, once I do that, I did the exact same thing. I took my colonized grain, which is the same strain as the one you just saw that I did inside the steel air box, and I put it inside of my max shield bin. Oh yeah, the one difference is I did use a liner with this one. The one that I did inside the steel air box, I did not use a liner, I actually ran out of them. But this one that I'm doing outside of the steel air box, I did use a liner. But at any rate, I put the liner in, I put the colonized grain in, one bag, I took some CVG that I made, and you guys know that that's cocoa coir, vermiculite, and gypsum. I showed you on the channel how I make my bulk substrate, that's all this is. 
and I'm gonna cover the colonized grain with the substrate that I made myself. Once I do that, I'm just gonna make sure that it's somewhat even, and then I'm gonna put the lid on it. Just like I said previously, I did not spray this with any water with my Flaresol bottle. I did not spray the walls with ISO alcohol, nothing. I didn't spray anything in here at all. Now we have a control max shield bin. So the three times that I spawned in the boat and I got contamination, that was open air. And so I have a max shield bin that we did in open air and I have one that we did inside the steel air box. So whenever you see the next video on the channel, if the one that I did in the open air is contaminated and the one that I did in the steel air box isn't, then we know what the issue was. The air inside my house has contaminated spores and that contaminated our max yield bin. After that, I put them in my brand new incubation box, which is a brand new Ace Infinity tent. This is a four by two AC Infinity tent. But one thing that I did think about that I didn't mention in the last video that I really think is gonna help with everything I'm trying to do with this mushroom thing. My incubation tent is in a better area of the house. Where it's at now, there's not a lot of traffic through there. I don't go in there a lot. Also, it's now on tile instead of the carpet. So I think that the new location of the incubation tent is gonna make a big difference in making sure that I get less contamination. So you guys watched me spawn to bulk almost two weeks ago, 13 days ago. I have not opened up the lids at all to check them out. We're gonna do that right now. If it's contaminated, you know we gotta throw it out. If it's not contaminated, we're gonna put it in the fruiting conditions. Let's do it. All right, well, the first thing that I'm doing, as always, is I'm spraying my gloves with the 70% ISO alcohol. I always do this whenever I start handling the bags, the bins, anything. So the first Max Shield bin that we're gonna look at is the one that I did outside the steel air box, the one with the CVG that I made. Let's open it up and take a look. Well, look at this right here. It looks like to me, 100% of this is colonized. It's looking great, check it out. Look at all this healthy mycelium. So yeah, I'm super excited. If you guys don't know, I've never made it to fruiting conditions with one of these Max Shield bins, the big ones. So I'm super excited that we made it with this one. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my Flaresol bottle, lightly spray the top of it. It doesn't need much moisture. There's a lot still in here. Also, I do wanna mention that I'm not using a casing layer. I don't think that it needs it at all. And I believe if I add one, it would just mess this bin up or increase the chance of contamination. And now we're gonna change lids. The colonizing lid was on there before. Now I'm gonna put my lid on here that has the filters on it. So that way we start getting that fresh air exchange. The fresh air exchange along with that evaporation, that water evaporating off of the top of the mycelium, that is gonna induce the pinning and that's gonna start causing our mushrooms to start growing. So the Max Shield bin with the CVG is contamination free. We put it in the fruiting conditions. Now let's check out the one with the North Spore substrate. All right, well, it's the same thing for this one. I have not opened up the lid at all until right now. Let's check it out. Well, man, it's some really, really healthy looking mycelium in this bin. Check it out. And so for this one, I wouldn't say that it's 100% colonized, but I'd say it's about 90% colonized and that's good enough. Like I said before, I've never made it to fruiting conditions with the Max Shield bin. The CVG one just made it. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with this one. Just take my Flaresol bottle, lightly spray the top of it. It doesn't need much at all. And then I'm gonna put my lid with the filters on it so that way we can start having that fresh air exchange. Oh, and by the way, if you wanna see how I prepare the lid, it's really easy. Whenever you order yours, it's gonna come like this, and then you see that we take the self-adhesive filters, and you just peel them off the plastic and put them right on the lid, it's super easy. After I do that, I always clean it with the 70% iso alcohol, and then once that's done, it's ready to be used, like no problem. So now that I have both Max Shield bins in fruiting conditions, I'm putting them in my fruiting chamber, which is this big eight x four AC Infinity tent. By the way, the video where I'm showing you guys every step of how I set up my fruiting chamber and the incubation box, 
that video is coming up shortly i'm making one more upgrade to my tent all the parts will be here on monday i'll get that put together and filmed and everything and then by wednesday i'm hoping that that video will be out but at any rate if you guys want to go ahead and get a jump start on setting up your fruiting chamber or your incubation box your tent ac infinity has some of the best tents and ventilation systems on the market if you're in the 420 community then you know they're like the gold standard for home growers and i want to bring them over to my mushroom growing side because tents and ventilation systems is something that mushroom growers use as well and i feel very very comfortable with ac infinity so if you want to get some ac infinity products for yourself use the code base drop keys that will give you a 10 percent discount on any order at acinfinity.com all right so now it's eight days later march the 17th and the first bin that we're looking at is the one with the cvg in it as you can see we already have some pins forming i have multiple pins all over the bin right now that's forming that's sticking out which is really cool always love this part of the process because once you start seeing those pins you know mushrooms are not going to be too far behind the bin that we're looking at right now is the one with the north spore substrate you can see that there is one or two pins that's showing as a matter of fact the first pin that i notice is right here make sure you guys remember this first pin because later on in the video you're going to see exactly what happens with it so even though there's a lot less pins showing right now on the north spore substrate you can tell just by looking at it that the mycelium is a lot more healthier in this bin than the one with the cvg in it as far as the pin production the cvg bin is ahead but as far as how healthy everything is looking you have to give it to north spore in this one all right so now it's march the 20th three days later and once again the first bin that we're looking at is the one with the cvg in it you can see that the mushrooms are getting bigger and bigger you can also see that we have a lot more pins covering almost the entire bottom of the substrate which is awesome i do want to mention right here that i am using a light for six hours a day from midnight to 6 a.m i do have a light inside of here and i'm using 65 watts that's it remember with mushrooms you don't need a lot of light light helps give them a little color but also help them know what direction they need to grow in now we're going to look at the max shield bin with the north spore substrate and you can see that we have a lot more pins growing on top of the substrate now remember just three days ago there was only one or two now look how many there is also that very first pin that i pointed out to you guys just a minute ago previously this is how it looks right here that's crazy right it's already looking crazy but the mycelium on the north spore is just looking so so healthy it almost looking like crystals sitting on the top of the substrate amazing seems to me that the mycelium is getting more nutrients out of the north spore substrate than out of my cvg but three days later march the 20th everything is healthy let's keep it going all right guys so it's march the 23rd three days later and you can see that i'm spraying my hands with the 70 percent iso alcohol you can also see now that i have the bin open that we have some mushrooms that we need to harvest this bin is the one with the cvg in it so you can see we obviously have mushrooms that has the veil torn on them or they're just about to tear so i need to harvest these mushrooms also you can see that some of the mushrooms have already sporulated meaning that they dropped their spores those black spots that you see on the top of the caps that's not the ordinary color of the mushrooms that's actually spores that's on top of there but at any rate like i said i'm only going to harvest the mushrooms that are ready i'm not going to take them all the perfect time to harvest the mushroom is just when the veil underneath is just about to tear or when the veil tears but the mushrooms haven't sporulated yet that's the perfect time to harvest your mushrooms oh and if you don't know how to harvest mushrooms i either do the pull and twist method where i just pull on it a little bit and twist it and a lot of times it'll come off but lately what i've been doing is i've been using my scalpel i've been cutting it right underneath the bottom base of the mushroom right at the substrate and it comes off pretty easily 
So I got all the mushrooms harvested that we're gonna do out of this bin today. Let's take a look at them. Man, don't they look beautiful? And look at that bottom blue bruising. So beautiful. Man, I really love how the mushrooms look whenever you harvest them. And then after you dry them, to me, they lose all the bag appeal. So I gotta ask some veteran mycologists, how do they dry their mushrooms and still have them keep their shape? Because whenever I harvest mine, I think they look great. But whenever I dry them, they end up looking all shriveled up and everything. And speaking on drying, to dry these mushrooms, I'm using my Presto dehydrator. With this Presto, I have more room than I do with the other dehydrators that I have. And these mushrooms are a little bigger, so I'm gonna use the Presto this time. For any veteran mycologist that's watching this right now, help me out in the comment section. How are you guys drying your mushrooms and still having them keep their shape and their form? I've been playing around with the settings on, you know, how high or how low to use as far as the temperature. I've been trying out 130 degrees Fahrenheit for six hours for seven hours and they still shrivel up. The only time that they didn't is whenever I did it the first time and I believe I did that one at 158 for five hours. So it was a higher temperature for a shorter amount of time and it kept the shape a lot better than it has ever since I changed. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong or am I doing anything wrong? If there's any veteran mycologist that's watching this and you're able to dry your mushrooms and still have them keep their shape, help me out in the comment section. But at any rate, like I said, I used the Presto dehydrator in order to dry out these mushrooms. I did have to cut the cap off of some of them to get them to fit, but that's no problem. As I just said a second ago, I'm gonna dry these out at 130 degrees Fahrenheit for five hours. I'll see you guys when they're finished drying. All right, so now the mushrooms are finished drying. Let's check them out. And you guys can see what I was talking about, about having them keep their form more than they are. But at any rate, let's go ahead and weigh up what we have. So after I dried them, we ended up with 25.4 grams of dried mushrooms. That's almost an ounce, I'll take it. All right, so now it's 24 hours later, March the 24th. And what you're looking at here is the mushrooms that I left in the bin yesterday. You can now see that they're ready to be harvested. So I'm just gonna go through and do the same thing that I did yesterday. The main thing that I'm noticing from these mushrooms that's different than the ones from yesterday is these are smaller and the stems are more skinny than the ones that we harvested yesterday. But at any rate, they're ready to be harvested. So that's what we're doing right now. So I got them all harvested now. Take a look at them. So you can see what I'm saying about these mushrooms are skinnier and smaller than the ones from yesterday but we was able to get more mushrooms, so I'm happy about that. I'm doing the same process that I did yesterday as far as drying them. Same temperature, same time, same everything, nothing's different. After they got finished drying, I weighed them up, and today I ended up with 17.8 grams of dried mushrooms. When you add that to what we got yesterday, the first flush for the CVG bin ended up being a total of 43.2 grams. That's how much dried mushrooms we got from yesterday and today, 43.2 grams. Hell yeah. All right, so let's switch over to the North Spore bin. It is still March the 24th. On the 23rd, I just showed you the CVG bin. And here on the 24th, we got finished with the CVG bin. This is how the North Spore bin looked on March the 24th. So you can tell by how the mushrooms look that tomorrow we're gonna have to do the harvest. Look at the first pin. This big one right here, don't it look crazy? But all the other ones, they're looking like standard mushrooms. I mean, look at this mycelium growth. It looks like it's been snowing in here or something. Now look at these mushrooms and compare them to the ones that I just harvested in the CVG. You can tell that the growth on these mushrooms is better than the ones on the CVG. Like I said previously in the video, I think that the North Spore substrate is giving the mycelium and the mushrooms more nutrients than they're getting with just my regular CVG. And so yes, in the CVG, 
they grew one day faster, but you can clearly see that these are the more fuller, the more healthier mushrooms. And if you look closely, you can see that there's even more mushrooms with the Norse spore bin than the CVG bin. All right, so it's 24 hours later, March the 25th. Let's take a look at the mushrooms and see how they look now. Well, look at this. You can see that the veil has torn on a lot of the mushrooms and on the other ones is just about to tear. So this is gonna be the perfect time to harvest the mushrooms. Look how beautiful and full all the mushrooms look. You can see that there's more like bundles of mushrooms in this particular bin. There's a lot more mushrooms in this bin. And like I was saying previously, these mushrooms are fuller, the stems are thicker, they're bigger, and just overall, just more healthy in every way. And check out this first pin right here. Man, oh man, oh man, what a crazy looking mushroom. Nature is crazy, but I love it. So obviously you guys know what we gotta do. It's time to harvest this bin. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna harvest all the mushrooms around that first pin, and I'm gonna do that first pin last. So I'm doing the same thing except with this one, I'm not doing the pull and twist technique. I'm having to use my scalpel and cut them at the base in order to get these mushrooms out of here. You guys can't see it, but there's a little piece of table that's behind the bin and I'm just sitting the mushrooms right there. You'll see why in just a second. So I'm just going through here and I'm getting all the mushrooms, even the ones that are small. Whenever I look at them closely, I can see that the veil is about to tear. So I go ahead and harvest those too. And finally, once I have all the mushrooms around the first one harvested, now I'm gonna go ahead and harvest this big one. Man, oh man, oh man. Look at this monster mushroom. Attack on Titan looking mushroom. Man, this thing's crazy. So cool. But at any rate, let me turn around the camera and now you guys can see what I was doing with all the mushrooms that I harvested. What I do now is I harvest all the mushrooms and I lay them down just like this. And then once I have them all harvested, I'll come back and I'll use my scissors to cut off that bottom piece that has substrate on it. I just cut it off and then I put it inside my bowl. And then you guys know once we do that, we're gonna put them in the dehydrator. So that's how I do my harvest. I cut them out of the bin. I lay them on the table right here. Once I have them all harvested, I come back with the scissors, cut off that piece that has the substrate on it. Speaking on that, check this out, isn't this cool? I'm gonna cut off that piece that has the substrate on it. Now look at it. Right before your eyes, you see how it's turning blue? So crazy. All right, so now I have all the mushrooms trimmed up. Let's take a look at them. Oh man. These mushrooms look beautiful to me. I don't know what you guys think. I think they look great. Well, all right, what I wanna do now is I wanna add some more value to this video. We've already done how to clone a mushroom video right here on the channel. But for anybody who hasn't seen that, let me go ahead and give you a little quick demonstration. I wanna shout out everybody that's on my Rookie Mycologist Instagram page. You guys was the first one to see the monster mushroom. And a lot of you guys had the same idea as me. A lot of the comments that I got was, man, I hope you clone that mushroom. And so you guys had the same thought as me. Since this is a monster mushroom, I definitely want to clone it. So that's what I'm going to show you right now. We've already done how to clone a mushroom video right here on the channel. But for anybody who didn't see that, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration on how easy it is to clone a mushroom. So as you guys can see, I'm in my steel air box. This is the steel air box from North Spore. It's called the Knock Box. If you want to get one for yourself, northspore.com. Use the code Base Drop Keys to get 10% off. But all you want to do to clone a mushroom is really easy. I have some agar cups right here. I'm going to crack open the lid to make sure it's easy for me to open once we do this. All you want to do is you want to take the mushroom that you're going to clone and you're going to tear it in half with your hands. Once you do that, your scalpel should be already flame sterilized. If you haven't done that, make sure you go ahead and do that. After that, you want to cut a piece of tissue out of the middle of the mushroom, about the size of a grain of rice. Once you do that, you want to put it in the middle of your agar cup. You want to move quickly and move with a purpose. You don't want to have the agar cup open longer than it needs to be. 
we want to try to eliminate the possibility of having this be contaminated and once you put the tissue in the middle of the agar cup you close it up and bam that's how easy it is to clone a mushroom once you see some healthy mycelium growth on your agar you can take some of that healthy mycelium and transfer it to other cups you can also use dishes if you want to petri dishes that's fine once your cup is colonized you can cut it into wedges transfer the agar to grain let the grain colonize like you normally do spawn the bulk and repeat the process since this is my first monster mushroom what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to isolate it as best i can and if you don't know what i'm talking about we'll definitely be covering that later on on the channel but at any rate that's how easy it is to clone a mushroom now what we got to do is we got to dry all the mushrooms that we just harvested out of the north spore bin now for all of these mushrooms, I actually had to use every tray that came with the dehydrator. There was a lot of mushrooms that we harvested. Now as far as the time and the temperature, I did the same thing that I did before. Oh no, I did change it. I put it on 135 instead of 130. I put it on 135 degrees Fahrenheit for five hours. But now that we have all of the mushrooms dried, let's put them on the scale and see what our dry weight is for this first flush from the North Spore bin. And so whenever we weigh it up, we end up with a total of 54.7 grams of dried mushrooms. Oh yeah, hell yeah. That's almost two ounces, so I'm super happy with that. So for the first flush out of the North Spore bin, we ended up with 54.7 grams of dried mushrooms. For the first flush in my CVG bin, we ended up with 43.2 grams of dried mushrooms. So if you was to compare everything that we cover in the video, the North Spore bin gave us more mushrooms, healthier mushrooms, more fuller and robust mushrooms, more healthy mycelium, the only thing that the CVG did is we was able to harvest one day sooner than the North Spore, but I don't think that really makes a difference. What makes a difference is having the best mushrooms that we can have. So the total amount of dried mushrooms that I ended up, both bins included, is 97.9 grams of dried mushrooms. I'm just gonna call it 98 grams. I can't tell you guys how super excited I am about this. If you've been following the channel, then you know the trials and tribulations that we had to get here. I showed you the amount of times that I got contamination, but I told you guys no matter what, we wasn't going to give up and we was going to make it to harvest. That just goes to show you that growing, no matter if you're a 420 creator like me, or you grow mushrooms or whatever you grow, growing something or creating something is a lot like life. You may have some tough times, it may get hard, you may get knocked down, but if you get back up, have some patience, show some resilience, you can definitely get to wherever you want to get to. I mean, look at me. I'm just an old country boy from Georgia. I never had any experience making content, making videos, or anything until I started. Now, because of you guys, I have a bona fide career as a content creator. If you want to know where to get the spores from, Come over to my Instagram account, the Rookie Mycologist Instagram account. Click on the link tree link in my bio and you'll see my recommendation on where you should get your spores from. But guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I want to thank North Spore one more time for sponsoring me and the channel. Use the code base drop keys to get 10% off any order at northspore.com. If you want to support me and the channel, come over to the rookiemycologist.com. I have some great merch on the site that everybody is loving. I want to thank everybody that's already put in your orders. So if you're looking for a hoodie, t-shirt, slides, stickers, we have a lot of great merch on the site. I really appreciate all of you. And until I see you guys the next time, I'm out guys. Much love. Rookie out.